Yeah, let's talk cricket, love the cricket. West Indies failed to close out their five-match T20 International Series against England at the second time of trying as the Caribbean side suffered a 75-run defeat in the fourth encounter at the Brian Lara Cricket Academy in Taruba, Trinidad and Tobago on Tuesday. After winning the toss and electing to field, West Indies conceded the second highest total by a full member nation in T20 Internationals 267 before they were dismissed for 192 in 15.3 overs and skipper Ruffman Powell knows exactly where his team went wrong. The intensity at which we start was very low and you know in a T20 game when you start with such low intensity it's very difficult to find a rhythm you know and I think that cost us that cost us dearly the post 260 in a very very big total. Yes, yeah, so all that means Powell and his men find themselves in a must-win situation for the fifth and final game, which he sees as an opportunity. Bowlers have to come to the party. You know, it's been disappointing for the last few games of how we have executed as bowling group. You know, so Thursday provide an opportunity for us to get that right. All right, joining us via Zoom to put Tuesday's loss into context and way up West Indies is chances in the decider is cricket analyst Fazir Mohammed. Faz, it's a pleasure to have you as usual. It seemed done and dusted after the first uh, two games. In fact, very deep into the third game, it seemed done and dusted. It isn't. We're at two all. And Rovman Powell has pointed at the bowling. What say Fazir Mohammed? Well, good to be on the show once again, gentlemen. But I, I, I'm not particularly bothered by, by how things are, have been going because remember, this is all building up towards a World T20 tournament. That is really paramount. I had actually predicted that the West Indies would win this series 3-2, but if it doesn't pan out that way tomorrow, if England win 3-2, if they rack up another huge score, what is more important is whether or not you, we, see, we are seeing the improvements that are required. That could concern about the lack of intensity, whether or not the West Indies were similarly lacking in intensity in the, defending a decent total as well in the, the match in Grenada on, on Saturday. And let, let's again put it in perspective. Before that match started on Saturday afternoon, it seemed all sweet and light for the West Indies winning the one-day series 2-1, 2-0 up in the T20 series. But, but this is what the T20 game is all about. Even that match a couple of days ago, well, yesterday, uh, to be more precise, with Andre Russell at the crease, even with the last man there, given the run rate the West Indies had at the time, you couldn't rule out some sort of miraculous chase because, again, this is what the T20 game gives you. But credit to England, they fought back. They fought back extremely well. But of course, you'll hear that talk about momentum and who's got the form going with them. I don't think any of that really matters too much because each T20 encounter seems to be an event on its own. Yeah, first, let me start here. A couple of things I want to talk about. But um, yes, uh, Robin Paul pointed to to the bowling, and I know sometimes we get emotional and. Uh, even one-dimensional in how we assess these things. But what would the English say about their bowling as well? Because the West Indies batsmen have been slamming the English bowling all over the place. So has the England bowling been bad as well? And, and that is precisely the point. Uh, Adil Rashid has been their star performer. And I think he's now up to number one in the T20 international rankings. But because, again, he is very much a class apart. They've got Rayan Ahmed, the young leg spinner. But also in the aftermath of that disastrous World Cup defense of the 50-over variety in India just over a month ago. Again, like the West Indies, like so many other teams, like the West Indies will be when they go to Australia for those three T20s after the Test Series and after the one days. it's about getting things right. So yes, England will also be concerned about their, their bowling because again, it's important that we put into context that these series are being played in the Caribbean because this is where the World Cup will be played, uh, apart from the United States, of course, and it's generally small grounds. Uh, so, again, players can get away with miscue. So that puts an increasing premium on the bowlers really hitting their straps from ball one. So, yes, England may be two all, they may be three two after tomorrow, but I don't think they'll be entirely satisfied either 
with what they've seen from their bowlers. Yeah, and the point I would like to make is that in T20 cricket, Faz, because batsmen are so focused on, on hitting big, so often good deliverers get smashed over the boundary for six. So sometimes a bowler ends up with atrocious looking figures and uh, it may not be completely representative of how the bowler bowled because batsmen are, as long as they see the ball and they, are, they pick up the line of the ball, they'll swing and hit good deliveries for boundaries. And that is why I would like to see, it's not going to happen obviously, uh, because for example, even as we're looking at the highlights, look at the boundaries. They are pulled in almost five meters of where it would be pr properly. So, so again, it, it seems weighed too heavily in favor of the batters, which clearly the fans want. But I think there comes a point where a six here, six there, five sixes, seven sixes, 15 sixes, 20 sixes, it almost doesn't seem to matter anymore. And the bowlers are, are left as cannon fodder, where even as you said quite correctly, Lance, you bowl a beautiful delivery, the batter miscues, but again, because of the bats, because of the strength of the player, it still carries for six. And, and your, your numbers uh, look utterly disastrous when you really haven't bowled badly. So, And that's why you've got coaches. That's why you've got, uh, when you've got selectors who I'm sure would be looking at these elements and determining whether or not, okay, he had none for 42 in four overs, but did he really bowl badly? Or someone else had, had one for 17. But what were the circumstances? Can we really say that they were really that good? So it's all about really assessing, as in these, these matches and matches to come, leading up to the World T20, who's really delivering or likely to deliver when it comes to the World Tournament. Yeah, I have to tell you, fans and Lance, that I still believe that the West Indies have not been very good with the ball in the last two matches. And yes, um, the, the surfaces favour batsmen, the conditions favour batsmen, but I, I don't believe in the same way that I saw them bowling to a plan in Game 1, bowling to plans in Game 2. I have not seen that. And Robin Powell pointed to the intensity at the start of the fourth T20 as well, which I agree was very much missing. But Faz, the final game coming up on Thursday, a quick comment on what you expect. Um, will someone like uh, Shane Thomas get an opportunity? He is one who can um, get early wickets, which the West Indies will need um, if they want to peg this England batting lineup back. That's a good point. But uh, again, it might sound sacrilegious to say mm -hmm. that really winning should not be the priority. You want to win, you to, to, to really win a series against England, you know, get, get some, some positive feeling, positive vibes around the West Indies team. But if you, I'm going to select, let's say, for example, in the case of Ocean Thomas, I'm going to select Ocean Thomas. It's not specifically to win this match, to win the series, but because I want to see what he has to offer in a pressure situation. If Phil Salt or anyone else, Josh Butler, are going after him, are looking to cut him to all parts, even with the, the raw pace of top edge goes for six, is he going to be unsettled? That, to me, is more important to assess his, his physical attributes, but his mental toughness in an environment where it's so heavily weighted in favor of the batters, especially at the Brian Lara Cricket Academy, where, where the ground seems ideal for high scoring. So, yes. Ocean Thomas or anyone else who plays. And again, as Lance said, on the England side as well, if they come away victors, I think it's more important for them to assess who has been able to adjust their game to meet the specific requirements of T20 cricket in the Caribbean. Yeah, and definitely from a West Indies standpoint, a few keys for me, how they go in those first five, six overs in terms of the number of wickets they can pick up, but also how they bowl at the death and who bowls at the death for the West Indies as well. Um, let's switch gear now, Faz, and, and talk about another issue because earlier today, Cricket West Indies named the Test Squad to take on Australia down under in January. There's a look at the squad. Seven uncapped players in there. Craig Brathwaite is the captain. Alzara Joseph, elevated to vice captain. Tejnarayan Chandapal, Kurt McKenzie, Alec Athanes, Kavim Hodge, Justin Graves, 
two of the seven uncapped players, Akeem Jordan, um, Kevin Sinclair, Tevin Imlak, Shamar Joseph, and Zachary McCaskey. Kimar Roach, the veteran, he's in the lineup as well. The spinner, Gurakesh Moti, is there. Joshua De Silva, as you would expect, as the number one wicket keeper in this setup. I want to get your quick thoughts, Fazir Mohammed, on this squad. Also, to point out, no Jason Holden, no Kyle Mears. They have decided to prioritize T20 cricket and not specifically T20 franchise cricket now, but Jason Holder, for example, says he wants to give himself the best chance to make the World Cup squad and then seals he is out injured so was not considered for selection your thoughts first up Faz. as you said we're pressed for time but there are so many issues in this regard i mean we could go in many different directions but just on that point a year ago we were in fear of what would happen to the west indies in australia in two test matches they lost by 100 and change at perth and then in the second test match they lost by 400 and change now you've got a team as you mentioned, with seven uncapped players. I think if you go back to 78, 79, with the, the team that was out, the Kerry Packer players, you still had cricketers with one or two test matches. And you're taking on the might of Australia, world test champions. It, it, it really represents, and it asks so many questions of our administrators as to whether or not we are playing test match cricket just for playing sake. Because I, I don't blame Jason Holder or Kyle Mayers or Nicholas Puran for prioritizing T20. These individuals have their own priorities, their financial futures, World T20, and so on. But when you really think about it, for this West City team as selected to go to Australia and even be competitive in Adelaide and Brisbane, which is a seamless paradise, is really stretching the limits of credulity. Yeah, I, I want to make a couple of points here, Faz. One, uh, would it have been a good time to get back someone like a Shea Hope into the side, given the relative inexperience? And I don't want to labor the Darren Bravo point, but I'm, I'm really strong on this one, and I'm going to tell you why. I had a quick glance today at the top 10 batsmen in test cricket at the moment. Kane Williamson at number one, the New Zealander, is 33 years old. Joe Root is 32. Steve Smith is 34. Usman Kawaja is 37 years old. That's the top four. Then you have a couple of 29-year-olds, Babar Azam and Travis Head. Daryl Mitchell of New Zealand is 32. Um, Lara Shane, 29. Brooke, 24. And then Roy Sharma is 36. Six of the top 10 batsmen in test cricket at the moment are over 30 years old four of them over 32 that does not include Virat Kohli who is 35 years old the point I'm trying to make here Faz is that I think gone are the days where you can tell me that a batsman is finished just because he's over the age of 30 and I think I just personally believe that we're at the stage where we need to start looking beyond the age of individuals. And, and I'm also saying this because it was Desmond Ains, and I keep saying it, who said earlier this year that he thinks that Darren Bravo still has a lot of quality. And he has shown even more quality since Desmond Haynes made that statement. So I, I am just really at a loss fast, to be honest with you. I understand your, 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 your feeling of being at a loss, and I understand your pit bull style biting down on this issue related to the age of Darren Bravo and, and drawing those other comparisons. But, but let's also be real. Darren Bravo, when he came back from that exile and that you know big idiot thing with, with Dave Cameron and so on, his test average after that was 12.5. So I take your point. I'm but, not but ignoring maybe your brought point. into the team at a wrong time, though, Faz. M maybe brought back too early um, without being given the time to perform at the regional level, which he has now done. And for me, that's the difference. This is a man who was second in run scoring in the last four-day tournament, and then he's just dominated your 50-over tournament. And given the relative inexperience of the players we are sending to Australia, why wouldn't a Darren Bravo have been a good option? Because, I, again, the selectors would have looked at, the, at all the, the, those factors, I would hope, and have calculated that, look, it's better to move forward or look forward than look back. Because we also have a situation, you mentioned Jason Holder. Holder has indicated, apart from his keenness to play World T20, that he wants to play in the three-test series in England in, in July. 
So let's say in the two test matches coming up, a young all-rounder performs superbly. And, and, and even if the West Indies are annihilated, that a couple of players perform well enough that raises the question, if Holder has to come back into the team, should they be put out? So, so this is the dilemma. This is what, what we are facing, uh, Ricardo and, and, and Lance, that we have a situation now where West Indies cricket, having failed to effectively and adequately manage the gathering storm, because other nations have been dealing with this issue of player priorities, T20 franchises, uh, Trent Bolt, didn't sign a retainer contract for New Zealand, didn't play a couple of test matches. He said it was a, a, a weird feeling, but these are the realities. And because, again, in the Caribbean, we seem to have a fundamental problem with having an honest, open discussion with people, whether they be selector, player, player, selector, president, whatever. We find ourselves in a situation now where two years after he played, made his test debut with a match-winning double hundred, Kyle Mingas is saying that he's prioritizing the T20 game. So essentially, if it feels like we're, we're casting sheep to the wolves in, our, in Australia next, next month, it's only because of our failure to manage the situation. And also, those young players who are going, look at their numbers. They, they've got batting averages in the, the 20s, the high 20s, low 30s. What does that tell us? about the overall standard of the game and makes a mockery of the outgoing president of Cricket West Indies saying when he left in March of this year that Cricket West Indies is in a very strong position. Mm. Well, Faz, I tell you what, it says a lot of things. Um, one of them maybe is that we're not necessarily picking the right players. But listen, my producer is telling me that we have to go and that we'll continue this discussion tomorrow. Okay. I have so much more to say on this issue. And I know Lance has a lot to say on this issue as well. And I know that you're not done yet either, Faz. <laughs> and tell you what, maybe we'll never be done because these things keep happening in West Indies cricket. Faz, it's been a pleasure again. We'll chat soon. Okay, Pitbull, you by doing. All right, let's take a break. We'll be back with more. The Borman male winner is going to be dropping by after this.